Hey guys, thanks for joining. In this video, we're going to take a look at problem 41 on leak code first missing positive. So what we'll do here is first we'll go over the problem description and take a look at the examples provided. Then we'll discuss different ways we can effectively implement a solution to the problem. We'll call out any edge cases we have to account for in our implementation. We'll discuss what kind of data structures and algorithms we can use to make the solution as performant as possible. And finally, we'll go ahead and actually implement the code and submit the code that we've written. I'm going to be coding this in Java, but if you want to follow along in a different language, that's fine, as the concepts do carry over from language to language. So let's jump into the problem. The problem reads, given an unsorted integer array, return the smallest missing positive integer. You must implement an algorithm that runs in O of n time and uses constant extra space. So this right here is why this is marked as a hard instead of a medium, if I were to bet. This constraint puts a lot of constraint on us in terms of how we can implement a solution and what kind of data structures and algorithms we can use and how we can iterate over the structure itself. So let's take a look at the examples. The first one, they provide us an input array of one, two, zero, and the output is three. And we can easily check that this is correct because the nums contains the integer one, the positive integer two. It contains zero, but that doesn't really change or affect our answer. And we can see that the smallest number not included is three. For example, two, we have three, four, negative one, and one. The output is two. We can see that two is not included in here. And this is a different case because for the first example, three was larger than the largest element in example one. So it was kind of out of the boundaries in that sense. But in example two, it's contained well within it. And in example three, we have the number seven through 12 and the output is one. So this is different than the previous two as well because the answer is smaller than any of the positive integers in the array. And notice that in any such case where it's smaller than any of the positive integers in the array, the answer is always going to be one. So let's think about what we can do to implement a solution. We have to make sure that our algorithm runs in linear time in constant space. So we have to avoid anything that does redundant or quadratic nested iteration. We have to avoid anything that needs to use a map, which grows in size with the input, or another list which grows in size with the input, etc. So we have to think about what we can do to keep things as lightweight as possible. So one thing to point out, they say we can use only constant extra space. The word extra there is suggestive because that seems to imply we can use the array itself. So once we receive the array, we can maybe change items in the array, swap positions, etc so long as we still get the correct output answer. So with that in mind, we can actually reuse the space provided to us in the array itself to help us determine the answer. So what we're going to do here is we're going to use the array space, we're gonna reuse it and swap elements based on certain conditions, so that way we can do a second iteration based on that partial ordering and use that to help us determine which is the missing number. So to facilitate that, I'm going to bring in a whiteboard diagram into view now. So what we see here is an example input with numbers negative 1, 5, 0, 1, 3, 6, and 2, as shown on the top. Then we have steps of an iteration process where we swap items based on certain conditions. And then at the bottom, which I'll get into in a moment, we use the partially ordered list to determine the missing item. So we're going to swap items with the goal of partially ordering this thing so that one appears to the leftmost item, two appears right after one, three appears right after two, assuming all of these elements are in the list. So let's start with the first line, i is equal to zero, n of i is equal to negative one, as we can see here. We're going to ignore that line because it's less than one. We'll come back to y in a moment. For the next step, i is equal to one, we see n of i is equal to five. We're going to swap that with n of five minus one. So we could also say n, n of i minus one. So that's how we determine which position to swap with. So here we're swapping five and three, or the index one with index four. So we get negative one, three, zero, one, five, six, two. So now we're a little bit closer to having this thing in a sorted order. We also rewind, notice that, because we want to do the same thing on the element that we've just swapped. So in the next step, n of i is equal to three, we want to swap with n of three minus one and rewind again. So now we have negative one, zero and three. So this thing a little bit closer still to being sorted. On i is equal to one, n of i is equal to zero, so ignore. i is equal to two. This is something we've visited already, so it's in the correct position. n of two is equal to two plus one, which is true. So we're going to ignore that. For i is equal to three, 
we're going to do another swap. So here we're swapping out that negative one with one. And now that one itself is in the correct position. So we're ignoring values less than one because we'll probably be swapping them out anyway at a later step. So i is equal to three again because we've just rewound. It's less than zero, so ignore. i is equal to four and i is equal to five are both in the correct position because we've already handled those with previous swaps. i is equal to six n of six is equal to two, so we're going to swap with n of one and rewind. So now we have one, two, with zero at the end. Then at i of six, the last step of this one, we're going to ignore it because the value is zero. So that covers the entirety of the first iteration. We've gone through every number, zero through five, corresponding to values one through six, or whatever the values might be in the array. And we've performed a partial ordering. So the true ordering of this thing would be 0, negative 1, 1, 2, 3, 5, 6. But instead what we have is 1, 2, 3, negative 1, 5, 6, 0. Now you may have noticed something. We have 1, 2, 3. Instead of 4, we have negative 1. And you may have also noticed, either at the beginning or just now, that 4 is the missing positive integer. What we can do to find that is just do one more iteration over the partially sorted array and keep iterating until we find an unexpected value. So an expected value will be the index plus one for each index. At this negative one, we're expecting that to be four, but it's not. So we can return four, and we know that four is the missing positive integer. In, in the case where we never have a unexpected item, that means our thing has items one up to n, in which case we would just return n plus one. In other words, we'd have a full consecutive list of integers from one up to whatever value. So this is essentially the blueprint for the algorithm we'll be implementing. So let's go back to the problem and actually implement that algorithm based on what we've discussed here. So as we discussed, there are two runs. First run is to swap out items that are not in expected positions. We're gonna check if the value is within boundaries. So that's what we were discussing before. It has to be greater than zero and less than the numbers dot length. You also have to make sure it's not already in the correct position. We don't want to swap out something that's already correct. That could put us in an invalid state. So if numbers i is greater than zero and nums i is less than nums dot length and nums i is not equal to i plus one, we're going to set up a temp variable nums i minus one. So this temp variable is what we were discussing before, the thing we're going to be swapping with. We also have to make sure that's not in its correct position for the same reason. We don't want to get into an invalid state. We could have put that right within the first if statement, but this makes the code a little bit easier to read. We can say nums temp instead of nums, nums i minus one. So if that's not equal to temp plus one, then we'll do the swap. Nums i is equal to nums temp. Nums temp is equal to temp plus one. And rewind. I minus minus, so we can perform the same check on the thing we've just swapped. So with that, we have the first iteration complete. Everything will be and it's partial order with quote unquote expected values in their expected places. So for the second run, scan until we find something unexpected. So the index should be equal to actual item minus one. If it's not, return i plus one. If that didn't happen, we have n, or we have one up to n items consecutively, return n plus one. So let's go ahead and submit that and see if we have the correct answer. So I've just run it a few times just to check against the variability of solution runtimes. And overall, we have a good performance, good memory usage, so I think we can accept the implementation that we have here. So that covers the content for this video. If you made it to the end, please leave a like and subscribe. Hit that bell icon for notifications for more Leetcode videos. And all that really does help out the channel. 
And also be sure to check out our website, bitethisstore.com, where we have a lot of different articles related to programming topics such as data structures and algorithms, web development, and similar topics. And we have an online store with mugs, laptop sleeves, mouse pads, and other merch related to programming humor and programming memes. Definitely worth taking a look. Thanks for watching. Thank <laughs> you.